to this edition of Able Down and Air, the one and only program in Vermont and beyond that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. And on this exciting edition, we speak to James Cavanaugh, the creator of the third annual Vermont Cerebral Palsy Conference um, at, uh, from, uh, as part of Green Mountain Self- uh, uh, Green Mountain Support Services. We have Casey Dewey, the Development Coordinator of Green Mountain Support Services of Vermont. Yeah. And um, James, or Jim, uh, tell us a little bit about you and um, your story and mm -hmm. why uh, you decided to create the Cerebral Palsy Conference of Vermont. Well, I was born February 20. 1943. Wow. Okay. And I'm 75. Wow, you don't look okay. it. Okay. And obviously, um, well, besides myself having cerebral palsy, obviously back in the 40s or during that time, um, it, you know, there weren't very many services for people with disabilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my mother and father wanted to put me on. <laughs> Away, but they said no. Mm -hmm. They said no, and thank God they said. But I cannot read, so I have talking books. Okay, go yeah. on. So, and uh, so I came up here. Mm -hmm. You came to Vermont from where? Yeah. Were you born in Vermont? I was or? born in Connecticut. You were born in Connecticut? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. At first, I could not talk. Mm -hmm. But my, my grandfather said, let the kid, <laughs> let the kid talk. Right. <laughs> take your time, take and your time. And they were quite surprised because he said, let the kid talk. Mm -hmm. And I've been talking ever since. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think we're very good to be an advocate mm -hmm. because I like to help people. Okay. Um, how does Green Mountain Support Services help you? They help me by writing my own story. Oh. They help me speak very clearly. Okay. So they help you become more of an advocate. Yeah. To, they teach you how to, they teach you advocacy skills? Yeah, I know about that. They think of help me out. What are so some of the things that What are some of the things does? that they help you with? Well that we just talked about. They help me get out into the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what type of services do they help you in the community with? Well, I get up. I get up and I feed myself. So and they uh, teach you they teach you daily living skills, right? Yeah. And I, I live with my friend. Oh, so you you have um, do you live in a, a I in an independent Living facility? Uh, yeah. I live with him. Do you live in an apartment? I live in an apartment with him. So does um, Green Mountain Support Services, they teach you daily living skills, or they teach you how to live on your own? Yeah. Okay. Thanks to Casey. Mm-hmm. Yes. As a matter of fact, I have a book on it. Okay, so we're going to um, see a little bit about your story. Let's take a look at James Cavanaugh's inspiring story. Let's take a look at this. My name is James Cavanaugh. I was, I was born February 20th, 1940. <laughs> Three. Yeah, I got that part. Now you take over. 
At this day and age, the mentally disabled were severely overlooked. Jim dealt with a lot of discrimination through his younger years. He never let that get him down, though. This has encouraged Jim to advocate for those with his disability and other disabilities that exist today. In 2014, I wanted to start a cerebral party conference. This conference was going to be specifically designated to advocate for those living with cerebral palsy. He reached out to his case manager, Casey Dewey, and explained to her what he would like to do. She started to try to locate where one of these meetings were held. She expanded her search, but still the closest ones she could locate were in California and England. She explained this to Jim, and she traveled to Massachusetts, where the United Cerebral Palsy Association is located, but no conferences are held there to meet with one of the groups to see what it would take to start a new conference in their area. Mm. I gathered a group of my peers and I said that I wanted to start a cerebral palsy conference. They started meeting weekly to discuss the challenges that they were going to have to overcome. The group consisted of other members that have been diagnosed with cerebral palsy also, and other disabilities as well. They brainstormed and planned for about a year, and finally held their first annual cerebral palsy conference. <laughs> it was a great success. Tons of information. And resources, from different doctors to different types of physical and emotional therapy. They also showcased a comedian who herself lives with cerebral palsy. After the first conference was held, it was agreed that this would be an annual event. Jim has managed to join the many other groups that advocate for cerebral palsy now. The event continues to grow year <laughs> by year, with it starting at an open local venue, and it has now required larger venues with breakout rooms and meals. Uh, I like to think my team for helping me to start my first conference. I live in Vermont with the a case. His, his name is uh, Josh Bull. Mm -hmm. He's not here right now. Okay, so um, does does the agency help you with? Uh, they help you with support services. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so what type of support services do they help you with? Jimmy's very lucky. He has a young man that is his shared living provider. Yeah, with you. And they're really close. And, yeah. They have a bachelor pad in town. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. All kinds of parties. Yeah. Yeah, well, sometimes he brings his dog. I have to live with somebody in the city. Mm. Huh. John Cock. What, what, um, so does the share of living provide? Do you cook for yourself? I no, he does all the cooking. He does all the cooking. Well, I'm watching TV. You watch well, TV. <laughs> well, what type of programs do you like to watch? I like the news app. Oh. I was watching that today. Oh wow! Um, and sometimes, no. mm -hmm. and sometimes I listen to the news mm -hmm. on the TV. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I know this is Jim's interview, but in terms of the conference. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. What type of activities usually happen at the conference? So That's maybe it would be helpful to know how the conference started. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So um, Jimmy came to me one day and he shared with me yeah. that one of his lifelong goals was to attend a CP conference mm -hmm. and share his story. Yes. Mm -hmm. And after some significant research, yes. we found that there weren't any CP mm -hmm. conferences. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, the closest one I found was in California, and the second closest was in London, England, which I was voting for, but Jim didn't want to go. I did not want to. 
Oh, um, uh, no more kissing. Would, <laughs> he, 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 wanted, gone, he, he didn't want to go on the airplane. <laughs> I would have gone if somebody had taken me on the plane. Mm. And somebody had to go with me. Right. No, yeah, I was volunteering we, for that. But so we decided that we couldn't find a conference close by, but Jim still had a dream to share his story at a conference for cerebral palsy. So we decided to create our own, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, how, how long of uh, time did it take you to research? I mean, it w I'm sure there was a lot of research involved um, um, with that. For which piece? Trying to search out a, a conference? No, to, yeah. yeah, to see, well, in terms <laughs> of doing venues, like which venue would um, host so you guys? So we or? did not have a budget for the first conference. Mm -hmm. no. um, a lot of it was generous donations, right? Mm -hmm. From yes. local businesses. Yeah. Um, and the first two conferences were held at our local VFW mm -hmm. and they donated the space. VFW yeah. is what? The VF Veterans of Foreign Wars. Oh, oh okay. Mm -hmm. um, so they donated their space. So that made choosing a venue very easy. Um, and then it's a great space, but it does not have different sections or rooms, so it didn't allow no. for breakout sessions. And, mm -hmm. the, and the place was cold. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, so what we did was we had some presenters come in, mm -hmm. but everyone at the conference participated in all of the same breakout mm -hmm. sessions, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And um, a breakout session is, is a, a, a different workshops yep. that happen during the day. Yep, so the workshops were sort of there for everyone because it's one large room. Now, mm -hmm. is the conference, it was, is it mainly for staff, providers, or, how, or people, people with cerebral palsy? How, how yep. is so the conference set up? Like? The conference is actually geared toward everyone. Um, community members interested in learning more about individuals with cerebral mm. palsy, mm -hmm. people who have CP, um, professionals who are helping individuals with CP. Yeah. It's really for everyone. Okay. Anyone can come in. Yep. And you invite. If so what come. made you get on board with this? I was Jimmy's service coordinator at the time. Okay. Um, and the one thing that we did find was between the first and second conference, we actually tripled in size. So which means what? Um, we went from about uh -huh. forty uh -huh. people attending the conference to about 400. to about one hundred and twenty. Okay. Wow, that's a lot of people. And that's why this year it's yeah. at uh, yep. uh, a, big, a, bigger, a bigger, yeah, bigger venue. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's Neither. why. This year we have chosen to go to the Stove Lake Resort. Not London, England. No, nope, not London, England. Um, we have a no. lot. <coughs> sorry, we have 10 um, breakout session options mm -hmm. with spaces. Including ours, because we're going to be doing Including one. yours, yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a lot of um, exhibitors coming to mm -hmm. display different things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's looking like so it's going to be a pretty big event. Is it going to be event. like uh, technology? Uh, in other words, like. Um, you said exhibitors. Mm -hmm. So, uh, is there going to be like tables with, with, um, with information, information, pamphlets, and, and all you that know, kind of stuff. products and that type of thing? Yes. Okay. Yep. I do have catch in my head. Yep. So, do we hope in the, um, after this conference, of course, there's going to be more yeah. conferences scheduled? Uh, is this going to be a, uh, Yearly? It's an annual event. An yep. annual it's event. An mm -hmm. annual. Okay. It's so do you, it, that, I mean, it's not strange because people start from basically nothing. You started with no budget. Correct. With the first one and then just got an outpouring of support. Yep. From yeah. other agencies or? Um, e yes, we had a lot of service coordinators mm -hmm. coming from other agencies the mm -hmm. second year. Um, other agencies um, sending people that they serve within their agency to okay. attend. Okay. Um, so it's a Stoflate Resort, which yes. is a much bigger venue. Yes. Um, uh, it's the the conference uh, is the third annual cerebral palsy conference. Um, 
To learn more about the Cerebral Palsy Conference, you can contact uh, Green Mountain Support Services Incorporated. It was GMSSI, right? Yes. S support Services Incorporated. Mm -hmm. Incorporated. Uh, org. Uh, org. So that's www.gmssi.org slash CP2018. Host, it's hosted by Green Mountain Support Services, and it's October 5th. We will be there with camera. Uh, we will be having a workshop there. Um, it's located uh, at the Stowflake Mountain Resort in Morris, uh, uh, in, in, in Stowe. Uh, it's from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Stowflake Resort in Stowe, uh, Vermont. Uh, and it is also sponsored by the Morrisville Cerebral Palsy Group. Uh, yeah. Again, uh, go to www.gmssi.org forward slash CP2018. Empowering neighbors with disabilities to be at home in the community. Uh, yeah. We would like to thank you for joining us on this edition of Ableton On Air. Um, but I have two more questions to ask you. One. Um, now, obviously, there's going to be more cerebral palsy conferences. Yeah. Um, there will be more every year. Every year. Every year. Uh, um, how do you see, um, it, in terms of um, future well, cere I, cerebral palsy conferences? It's um, going to be a long. Is it going to be just. I mean, um, uh, will there be more throughout the year, or is it going to be only once a year? Once a year. Once a year. It'll be once a year. Yep. Okay. Well, thank God. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, thank you for sharing your story. It's going to be, it, 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 it's a wonderful story because um, uh, uh, you're a very powerful person to know. Yeah. Any questions you want to yeah. ask? Okay. We would like to thank you, and thank yeah. you. Casey, yeah. for joining us on, if on this edition of, and <coughs> you, you're more than welcome to come back. Okay. Okay. Thank you, well, and um, again, more information on the third annual Cerebral Palsy Conference. You can learn more at www.gmssi.org, CP 2018. Again, April, uh, um, October 5th. Uh, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Stowe Flake Resort, hosted by GM um, Green Mountain Support Services and the Morris Bill Cerebral Palsy Group. Thank you for joining me on this edition of Ableton On Air. Uh, see you next time. Welcome back to Ableton On Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. Over the last 22 and a half years, I've had the pleasure of being a humanistic journalist focusing on issues of importance to the special needs community, both in New York and in other states. And I've interviewed organizations that are superheroes in their own right. Let's take a look at a culinary segment of superhero proportions. Let's take a look at this. Well, that puts an end to this superhero edition of Ableton On Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. See you next time.